Hello everybody. Happy Sunday. Hope everybody is having an amazing, amazing Sunday. So for me, um, <laughs> my Sunday has been pretty calm, pretty cool, pretty, pretty laid back. And, um, you know, the, 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 the beautiful thing about it is, um, when you sit back and you really take the time to realize that, you know, life is always full of change, right? Always full of change. And um, a lot of times I don't think we realize how much change impacts our lives, right? So um, listen, I just want to get started. I want to welcome everybody. Um, this is my show that I do every Sunday at 12 noon called Live with Carla Nicole. Um, and uh, my spiritual mission is to impact others and encourage others to make sure that they, um, you know, make the best out of this life while you're here. You know what I'm saying? It's so important. It's so important. And not to mention, you know, a lot of times in our life, I think we have a tendency to um, just not really realize that there's so much in life that we can be doing, but a lot of times we really aren't sure what to do per se. But we can do some pretty, some pretty awesome things. So I want to talk about reinvention today. Okay. So everybody that knows, um, this is the transformation series. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to share the video. Um, if you're not aware, I do have a, 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 a YouTube channel called Carla Nicole wisdom channel. So be sure to subscribe and, um, do that right after this is over and be sure to share this share this video somebody needs to hear it you know I always say that so today we're going to talk about reinvention so I want to talk about this because I think it's important that a lot of times we get overly consumed with believing that our past has to be get this we believe our past has to be the best predictor of our future but if your past is not so um, breathtaking or your past is not so, I mean, great to, to be uh, enlightening your life in the future, I strongly suggest that what you do is you step back and you say, hold on a minute. I think I need to figure out a way to reinvent my life. I don't like my past per se, or my past was a little shaky or, or, or wasn't so, um, wasn't, a, you know, a lot to be proud of. So what do I need to do to reshape my past? You can't, <laughs> you can't, your, your past is done. There's nothing you can do about your past, but there's something you can do about your now and your future. So I want to talk about reinvention because it's very important. A lot of times reinvention is not that hard. And it is very easy to do. All we got to do is we really have to sit back and reflect on what it is that we don't care for too much. What it is we don't like. What was it that we did? What kind of choices were we making? Um, and, and then who was in our life that was encouraging the BS? Who was there? Because a lot of times we have an audience in our life. And that audience is not someone that is applauding our goals applauding our advances, applauding our greatness. They're not really applauding that, but they love to applaud when we fall on our ass. <laughs> when we do stuff that isn't too good, they, they love to applaud that. So we have to sit back and say, hold on. Who's in my audience in my life? Are these people really truly excited about my gains in my life? Are these people really excited about how I'm doing as far as doing better in my life if those people in your life are not applauding your gains or applauding you doing well or applauding you um making a strive to the better then they need to be out your life and it's not hard to get rid of them just you know tell people hey listen i'm i'm taking my time now what i usually do and i call this my lay low and reinvention but I call it a lot of times, I'll say, well, I'm, I'm just laying low and reinventing. That's all. You might not see me for a while. People be like, where's she at? I ain't talked to her in a minute. Or I haven't seen Carla Nicole. Where's she at? I'm laying low and I'm reinventing. And reinvention can be, I'm studying. 
I'm getting close to some spiritual leaders that I need some, I need them to pour into me some things. I get close to some, some, some gentlemen and I'm big about men in my life because I feel like, you know, men in your life that really um, care about your game and really want to see you achieve, then I have them close to me and I keep them really close in my life. I have mentors. So I, you know, you might not see me for a while, but it's not like I'm doing that, um, without a purpose. Trust me. If I'm laying low and you're not seeing me, it's because of a reason. Trust me. So what I'm trying to encourage everybody is who's in, who's in the audience in your life, pay attention to that. And if they're not really applauding when you are making strides or they're not really supportive, okay, I want you to get this. This is very important. They're not supportive when you're making strides or when you're trying to do something positive or when you're trying to reinvent your life, they don't need to be in your life. Okay. And then here's the other thing. A lot of times I think we lose sight. This is very important. We lose sight of how important it is to sit back and say, Hey, I think I don't want to see this particular reflection anymore. I'm tired of seeing this in my life rather than always being a victim. And I think a lot of us have had stages and times where we're like, you know what? I'm tired of seeing the same stuff over and over and over again, but yet I act like I'm a victim of it. You don't have to be a victim of it. Listen, you can change your life today, right now. Uh, I mean, like as soon as this live is over, you can decide right now, you know what? I'm done with the BS. I'm done with these people. I'm done with the stuff that's going on and you can change it right now. See, we don't understand. And I say this a lot. Understand this energy proceeds action. So energy, meaning what's in your mind? What are you thinking? What's in your head? What is your thoughts? What are you desiring? Have you taken the time to see why you're here on the planet? Do you know why you're here? Do you? I mean, I tell my kids all the time and I tell the people I coach all the time, do you know your purpose? And if you don't know your purpose, okay, that's not a bad thing. A lot of people are walking around in a daze, as my dad would say, walking around in a daze and taking up space. Okay, but you can change that. And it's very simple. I've given this, I've given you guys this gift a long time ago. I'm going to drop it again today because I, I feel in a gifting mood. So I'm going to gift this to you again today. You know how you can find what your purpose is? your gift what are your gifts in your life what are you good at it takes very little effort to do that is what you need to be paying attention to what are your gifts everybody is born with a gift everybody on the planet is born with a gift so what does that mean that means what are you good at naturally it takes you no effort takes you no real real thought you're just good at it naturally. So for instance, for me, and I talked about this before, I'm a poet. So I, I'm able to write a poem effortlessly. Don't take me all day. I can take something, a, a, a scenario and write a whole poem without any effort. So what I tell everybody, and this is very important, if you want to reinvent your life, it's very important that you master your gift. Say, for instance, you're a beast at cooking. Okay, cook. Don't cook, but cook to excellence. Be excellent in whatever you choose to do. Excellence is key, okay? Excellence is very important. We must achieve our gift to our best ability. I'm talking about do it to where you're doing it in your sleep. It's very important. And see, a lot of times when we want to reinvent our life, it's not hard. We just have to stop doing what we're always doing. You want to you want to change some things? You got to make the change very easily. It don't take that much. Minor changes is very easy to do. Let me tell you something. When you decide that you want to change the way, we'll just say for instance how you're parenting your children. You're tired of arguing with your teenagers. You're tired of doing this back and forth with them. They don't want to listen. You're tired of arguing. You got to change it. But first, in order to make a change, you have to first put forward. Remember, I say energy precedes action. You first have to put the thought in your mind of what you want to see happen and look what it looks like in your mind. So 
Energy precedes action, which means thought. Thought is an energy. So what you need to do is envision what you want to see as a parent with your teenage daughter or your teenage son. I'm tired of them coming in, doing this and doing that. Okay, you must change what you want to see in your son or daughter's life first. What do I want to see? Once you envision that, energy precedes action. So that means you can then start making steps towards that vision that you see in your mind of your idealistic look of how your parenting style becomes. Then you must take time to educate yourself on other parents that have idealistic relationships with their teenagers. There are parents out here that have teenagers they get along with, they have a great relationship with, and there are ways and means to which you can do that. It just does it doesn't take it doesn't take science for it. It takes time, effort, energy, and it also takes some design, redesigning and reinvention of how you're parenting your kids. So this is just an example. So if I'm tired of arguing with my daughter, I'm tired of arguing with my teenage son, I have to first learn what do I need to do to change me? You can't change someone else. I don't care if it's your child. I don't care if it's your animal. I don't care if it's your mate. I don't care if it's your parent. I don't care if it's your siblings. I don't care if it's your friends, your family. You can't change nobody else but yourself. And the, the earlier you understand that, trust and believe the better you will be when it comes time to sitting down and wanting to mark some changes so like i said as an example you want to change your your teenager you want to have some teenager that is going to come in and re be respectful you first have to learn well how did you get i see you know start start doing some um research research let me tell you something about research i'm a researcher anyway but when it comes to learning how to change and reinvent, you've got to do the work. So if you want to change and reconfigure your relationship with your teenager disrespecting you or disrespecting themselves, really, because really when they're casting off disrespect to a parent, they're really disrespecting themselves. So with that said, how do I change the way my teenager is treating me? How do I change that? Change you. Number one, change you. Thanks, T Lane. Change you. So it doesn't, it's not hard, but it takes some time and it takes some work. Anything that's worth value, it's going to take work. It's going to take time. It's going to take patience. It's going to take educating yourself. So you go out here and you find some parents that have teenagers that are respectable. You go out here and you talk to some mentors. You have some mentors tell you, well, look, when it came time, because everybody has had storms. Everybody that's a parent has had a teenager one time or another. You normally have a teenager one time or another. What did you deal with? How did you deal with this? For instance, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mother of a daughter and a son, okay? My daughter's 19, my son is 10. So I've never had a teenage son. I don't know anything about that, okay? So I have to educate myself by speaking with other mothers, that single moms, that have teenage sons. And then I have to talk to them about, well, how do they, yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, or they're so respectful. They come in and make sure you're good. How do they know to take the trash out? I don't hear you yelling or screaming. They're, they're, they don't disrespect themselves. They're nice to their girlfriend. They got an idealistic relationship with their coworkers at work. What the heck did you do? And how did you do that? So in order for me to be a good mom, I have to learn from other good mothers. There's a lot of examples out here. I got to take, take some time out to read some books. Oh, yes. We have to read not just books about parenting, but we got to read spiritual books. Oh, yes. You've got to take the time to open and crack open them books and read them. I know they look nice for decoration, but damn it, they got some knowledge in there that you can be using to help you improve your parenting style with your kids, with your teenagers that don't want to respect you. So as an example, so if I want to reinvent how my teenager is responding to me, I must first reinvent how I'm responding to them. So it's hard to argue with somebody. Hey, Gene, it's hard to argue with a child. I'm sorry. It's hard for a child to argue with a parent that isn't going to argue back. So first of all, you need to learn how to check your child. <laughs> Understand this. I am your mama. 
So what you're not going to do is disrespect me. That's number one. Now, see, I don't have this problem, but I'm just saying as an example, some mamas do have this problem. So I'm just trying to put you up on game. I saw a very disturbing video today where a mom found out her daughter was smoking dope and just being disrespectful to herself. And the mama's swooping on her and spanking her. Hey, Marquita. Spanking her on Facebook and, you know, just going out here. Nah, you what you ain't gonna do. Da, da, da. You know, it's like, okay. I don't think that that's going to work. That maybe made it worse. I'm not sure, but it oftentimes when we sock them and slap them in the face and whoop on them, it doesn't necessarily help the situation. Sometimes, it, and a lot of times, it makes it worse. However, hey, Mookie. However, it's not easy out here being a mom. It's not. You give everything you got to your kids. Fathers too. There's fathers out here, single fathers. There's parents, both parents in the home, giving everything they can to their kids. And then they come home and their kids are disrespectful and not respecting the fact that, hey, listen, that's not okay. And they're beautiful when they're little and cute and sweet. We love them. Oh my God, my baby's so cute and sweet. But they grow up. And when they grow up disrespecting you, you're like, excuse me? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. You must have got this confused. <laughs> like I said, I didn't have this scenario. My daughter was very respectful. We had our rocky time, but I can't even remember a time when she ever disrespected me. Ever. Now, we've had times when I had to get in that behind and where she thought she got a little cute. But as far as coming out and just full-blown disrespect, no, I did not have that. And I think it's very important that we start, hey, Morris, we start with our children young. They know, like, you know, it's cool and all. But learn to understand this, what you're not going to do is disrespect me. You're not going to disrespect yourself either. Because, see, my mama used to say, and <laughs> it's funny, she used to tell me this, and I used to think, well, what, what does that mean? She said, Nicole, when you go out this door, you're on stage. I was like, okay. You represent me and your father out here. So when you, hey, job, when you go out here and you are out here in the atmosphere, out here doing God knows what, you're representing me and your father. So let me tell you something. Don't ever embarrass me or your father. That's very important. Now, I was so thankful for that. I mean, years later, you know, and now, you know, I, I make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to impress on my daughter and, and my son that they have to hold a pride in themselves and then understand you represent me, you represent our family. Because a lot of times we don't think about the fact that we represent not just ourselves, but we represent everybody. So in order to reinvent how we respond to our children, we must first begin by telling our children it's very important to take pride in who you are. Please take pride in that. And please make sure that you are, you have class. My dad used to always tell me, you can't buy class, honey. That's something you can't buy. And I thought, well, really? You either have it or you don't. I said, okay. These little, little, like I said, these little nuggets when I was young, oh, are valuable diamonds now. You know what I'm saying? They're diamonds now. So again, when you have a parent that tells you and teaches you something, but actually I think it's very important how we respond to our children. Yes, job, confidence, pride, class. Yes, all is important. And so I think it's important that we don't lose sight. That when we are, when we're raising our children, we're, we're taking, we're taking our time. We're really trying to make sure that we are, you know, instilling in them values that it's important that they understand class is important and, and they understand that they are important. And it's not just about you and I as parents, but it's also about who they are. But again, in order for us to restructure how our relationship is going with our children, we must first reinvent ourselves. So like I said, take the time to study. Lay low. Don't say too much. You know, like I always tell parents that's going through that turbulence. Don't argue back and forth with your kids. Don't do that. Don't do that. 
lay low for a while, reinvent, make some changes because your yesterday doesn't have to predict your today. Your yesterday is yesterday. Your today can be changed today. Like I said, right after this live, when I get off of here, you can make a decision to make a change and it could change right now today. That, it's just that simple. It's not hard. You know what I mean? So I just wanted to gift you guys this morning or this afternoon. I'm sorry. I wanted to gift you guys with something. Please understand. Life is full of change. Life is full of challenges and all kinds of stuff. But what we can do is we always can make sure. How do we make sure that our children are not in vain or not in vain sitting up here disrespecting us? And we have to tolerate it. We don't. But what we do have to do is we have to change our strategy. We have to change how we interact with them. We have to change how we don't allow certain things going on. That's not, ac that's not acceptable. What you're doing is not acceptable, period. And there's going to be consequences of your actions if you keep it up. And see, sometimes when it gets to the point where it's so bad, we have to make dire decisions. Matter of fact, we got to make decisions that maybe they have to go to, uh, I don't know, scared straight or something like that because it's out of our hands. It's not always, see, sometimes we think, well, oh my God, you just put your, you put your kid in somebody else's hands. No, I put them in somebody's hands to save their life because if I don't, if I don't kill them, the streets is going to kill them. So I got to make a decision here. And the decision is. Listen here, you want to be out here doing God knows what with God knows who? Because you think you're cute, you think you're grown, you think you can do what you want to do? Okay, that's fine. But guess what? Not on my watch. <laughs> you're not going to fail on my watch. That's not going to happen. So I'm going to, hey, what's the good, Regina? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that I show you some love and I'm going to put you in scared straight. And you're going to find a new reality of what you're going to find yourself in if you keep going down this path of destruction, self-destruction. And see, we don't want to talk about self-destruction, right? We don't want to go there. But we have to. We have to tell our kids, look, I'm not going to sit here and watch you self-destruct. I'm not. So with that said, I love you. But in my love for you, sometimes I got to let you go. Either I'm going to have to put you in another place or we're going to have to, we're going to have to change some things. And my reaction and my perception of how you're relating to me as a parent, if it's disrespectful, I got to change that. Number one, I'm not going to be accepting of it. Number one. So that's what's key. It's very important. Again, like I tell everybody, reinvent your children. Reinvent your, reinvention of your life is very important. It's not hard to reinvent. It's just it's just needed and it's important. And when we choose to make some some differences and make some challenges, I mean, and we really decide, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. That's fine and wonderful. But when you're making those changes, we have to sit back and say, okay, um, what are we going to do different here? Because this isn't working. <laughs> it's not working for me. I can't continue on this trend with you. And so I wanted to use the parenting as an example, because like I said, I, I was really um, disturbed today by that video with the mom and, um, and how frustrated she was by her daughter making poor choices. But I, I get it. I understand her frustration. I understand her pain. I understand her saying how angry she is. She gives this child everything and this is what you do. And, and I get it. But there has to be a way that we can parent better without putting our hands all on them and, and embarrassing them. There has to be a way we can get through to a teenager without being uh, violent. Sometimes we can do some things a little different. And, you know, our parents did it to us. So we think, oh, well, we, we ain't, it ain't kill us. Well, no, it didn't. But can we change? Can we, can we make a difference? Can we make a difference? Can we make some changes? Can we reinvent? And we can. It just comes to a point when we have to just make that decision and do so. And once we do, it'll be, it'll be best for all of us. It'll be to our betterment. Trust me, it really will. 
So I'm out of here. If you guys don't know already, I'm a wisdom coach and I have all kinds of services that I do for, for people. If you need a wisdom coach, if you need help, if you need to be a part of something, please reach out to me. I have an 800 number. It's 844-5-WISDOM. Uh, also, um, you, can, uh, you can also be a part of my group. I have a group called the Wisdom Focus Group. And being a part of the Wisdom Focus Group is my membership group. And what we do is we, we create, I have created an atmosphere to where people can get wisdom from me and be a part of that group. And it's not even that expensive. I have a, a promo rate right now for $9 a month, but it's going to eventually be a little more. But right now I'm just trying to get more members on it. So if you want to be a part of the, the wisdom focus group, please let me know. I also have a course out and my course is $97. It's called learn to unlearn. So again, it's a, it's a course that you can use. Actually, the course helps you to unlearn how you are doing what you're doing and that's, and it's not working. So how do we change that? How do we improve that? You got to unlearn it, right? Learn to unlearn some things. It's very important. So again, I have plenty of services out here. If you need me, just one eight four four five wisdom You can get a hold to me. Also, inbox me. I mean, I'm just, I'm just a, a, what, a call or inbox away. So it's pretty cool. But anyway, I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful Sunday. Um, and again, it's very important that everybody enjoys their life and understands that your yesterday doesn't have to predict your tomorrow or your today. You can make a change just by reinvention. Trust me. I've done it a lot. <laughs> Trust me. So uh, again, and I want to just respond to some people that re said some things. Um, Regina said, good morning. And she said that um, she knows the feeling. Hers are 25 and 30 and she raised them both. Their father passed away uh, of asthma at a young age. God, um, thank God she raised, she raised them to be kings and um, they've never been in jail. <laughs> so that is a beautiful thing. Congratulations, Roberta. I'm glad that you did that. Like I said, it's not easy being a mama of, of young boys, but you know, we can do it. We just have to be persistent and we have to have help. I have to have men in my life to help me with my son. It's just what it is. I can't, I don't know everything about being a boy. So I have men close to me helping me with, you know, helping him build his, his, uh, his spirituality. So I have Docs Digla. He has, he has this, um, meditation education and we do meditation together. He and he and I, and my son, we do meditation every week together. Um, I have men that I show him that are doing powerful things and are entrepreneurs. So I, I encourage him to be a creator. So all of these things are essential. I believe, I don't think that, you know, you have to say, woe is me. You know, I don't have a man to your my son. You don't gotta do all that. You don't find you some powerful men that care about you. And they'll care about you caring about your son and you'll be just fine. Trust me. There's all kinds of, uh, there's all kinds of things you can do to improve that. So we don't have to go there, but, um, it's very important that we, that we do tap into that. Um, you're welcome T lane. I'm so glad that you, that you listened. And again, everybody, if you don't know, I have a YouTube channel called Carla Nicole wisdom channel. Please go over there and subscribe. Um, it's nothing to subscribe to my channel. I have plenty of videos and all kinds of stuff. Just curl yourself up, get you a, a, a cup of tea, get you a nice warm blanket and just watch my videos, man. Listen, I, I, you know, I kick the wisdom. That's what I do. I'm a wisdom coach, right? So go over there and, and subscribe. Don't forget to share this video also. So share the video and, uh, let me know you subscribe by Typing, ty type in here that you subscribe. Say, I subscribe to your channel so I know that you subscribe. Listen, I'm trying to get the subscriptions up. I want to make sure that I impact lives, and that's what I'm here to do. So, that's what I'm doing. Right Carla Nicole, I'm out of here. Um, take care, everybody. It's Carla Nicole. I'm signing off. Best kept. Have a good day. Bye.